Um, so my name is Kang Zhen, or you can call me KZ, and I'm a solutions engineer based in Singapore. So the topic that we are going to talk about today will explore the use of the AWS auth method <clears throat> to authenticate AWS EC2s to access secrets stored in HashiCorp Vault. And we will be using Terraform to do a deployment of the AWS environment, as well as the configuration of HCP Vault itself. So before I begin, here's a very quick breakdown of HashiCorp Vault. Yeah. And Vault can be understood using three main components as shown in this diagram. At the top will be clients, uh, which are essentially the end users of Vault. <clears throat> so this can be actual humans or machines such as our applications or CI-CD tooling. Then we have authentication on the bottom left and Vault integrates with well-known identity providers such as Active Directory, Okta, and other cloud providers to help establish and authenticate the identity of clients that wish to interact with Vault. So this allows Vault to tap into your existing IDP uh, solutions within the organization. And today we'll be exploring and focusing on the AWS identity provider. And on the bottom right of the pyramid are the secrets engine, and these are essentially the key capabilities of Vault. So this allows the use of advanced secrets capabilities such as dynamic secrets, PKI, encryption as a service. But however, for this session, we will only be using the standard KV, also known as the key value secrets engine. And once we've understood all the different components, uh, we also have uh, what we call policies. So policies are essentially the mechanism to authorize what users and can do uh, within Bob itself. <clears throat> and at a high level, this is how the authentication workflow will look like. So from the left, we have an AWS resource with an IAM role that's being attached. So in this case, we have an EC2. We then bind this IAM uh, role to a Vault role that has been created within Vault itself. And we then assign the necessary permissions to this Vault role tr you, through the use of a Vault policy. And once uh, this is established, we can then use the EC2 to authenticate with Vault to retrieve a token. And this token is what is used for all subsequent calls to, um, to check whether the particular EC2 has the necessary permissions to read a secret within Vault itself. So, and there are two main types of AWS authentication workflow. Um, the recommended approach would be to use IAM. So IAM supports IAM principles such as our IAM users and roles. And this method can be used across the different AWS resources. So things like EC2, Lambda functions. And under the hood, it uses the AWS STS API. And the legacy approach is through the EC2 authentication workflow. Uh, and this only supports the EC2 instances. And so the EC2 method relies on the EC2 metadata service, um, but it can provide some form of granular information about your EC2 during the authentication itself, such as what is the AMI that the instance is using. But in this snapshot, we will be using the IEM workflow. So before jumping into the demo, let's walk through the demo architecture on what we are trying to accomplish. So here on the right, we have created two EC2 instances, App A instance and App B instance. So in our Vault environment, we have created a Vault role called Row A to correspond with the App A role created in the AWS environment. And Row A has a policy attached uh, allowing it to perform read actions on the app A secrets and uh, app A secrets. And once the two environment has been set up, we then bind this IAM rule to the Vault rule. And this allows the app A instance to authenticate to Vault as role A, providing it with the permission needed to read from the app A secret. And because the policy only allows access to a app A secret, any attempts to read at B secret will be denied. 
And as mentioned earlier, as part of this demo, we will be deploying the entire infrastructure using Terraform. And Terraform is an infrastructure as code tooling that can be used to enable workflow automation. And this is in contrast with a traditional manual provisioning method, which is more slow and error prone. And using a IAC tool like Terraform provides a system of record and a standardized workflow, allowing you visibility across your infrastructure and your vault. <clears throat> so now let's dive straight into the demo itself. So within this demo, I have created my, um, so everything has been created using Terraform. Um, so I'm only going to focus more on the vault part, uh, this being a vault workshop. So the first, <clears throat> so before I start, I will just do a Terraform plan and apply, uh, apply and then I'll walk through the different files within within this repo itself. Okay, so at the start we have a provider.tf. So provider are essentially the external plugins that we need to provide to Terraform so that Terraform knows how to interact with the different cloud providers or SaaS product that we want to interact uh, that Terraform needs to interact with. So in this case, we have a AWS provider for uh, our AWS um, interactions, and we also have a vault provider. So within the vault provider itself, we can set the token using the vault token environment variable. So we can just do an export vault token and give it the token that's needed. So once we have uh, established and created the providers, we then enable the AWS authentication method. So remember the pyramid that we were looking at? So this is the bottom left. Essentially what we are doing here is to tell Vault that we want to enable the AWS identity um, or the AWS auth method within uh, the pool, uh, the different kinds of identity provider that is supported. So once we have established, uh, once we've created the uh, authentication backend, we then create a mount. So a mount is essentially a secret engine that you want to enable and then prefixing it with a path. So in this example, I'm trying to enable a version two of the key value uh, secret engine and I'm putting it into a path called KVV2. Then we have the actual secret itself. Um, so in this demo, for and for this demo only, I'm using um, the Vault KV secrets V2 uh, Terraform resource to inject my secrets into Bob itself. But take note that this is not a recommended approach. Uh, this Doing this means that your secret will be stored in your Terraform state, and which means that the secret could be visible to anyone with permission to view the state file. And by doing so, there's a lot more security considerations as to how you would want to secure and store your state file. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm doing it through a Terraform resource block. So <clears throat> what I'm doing here is once I've created my KVV2 secrets engine, I am, uh, I'm putting in two secrets into the engine itself. First, I have an app A secret um, with the secret called app A secret, you know, the value of app A secret. And I'm also adding in an app B secret with the value of app B secret. So once we've injected the secrets into <clears throat> our uh, secrets engine, we then have policies so the policies essentially tells Vault who can do what within Vault itself. So in this case, after rendering this uh, resource block, we will have uh, a policy that looks something like this, where essentially I have a policy that uh, that is for the team A to be able to do a read on the app A secret. And I have a separate policy for team B to do read on the app B secret. <clears throat> So once I have the policies, I then need to attach these policies to a vault role. So here I'm creating the vault role based on the AWS authentication method itself. And take note that here we are also we are, we are binded, uh, we are binding this role to a AWS IAM role. So we have one for app A and one for app B. So this IAM role that we are looking at is actually created uh, as part of the AWS resource block uh, when we are creating our AWS infrastructure. So here I have my app A role. Uh, app A role um, is also linked to a app A instance profile. And this app A instance profile is then attached to my app A instance that I've created. 
So this is the instance profile here. So now that my Terraform apply has, uh, is completed, let's move on to uh, <clears throat> our AWS console to look at the uh, instances that have been created. So here I have my app A instance and app A instance. So if I connect to my app A instance here, I will be able to do a box login of goes to AWS. Oops. Sorry, method equals AWS. <clears throat> so using the IAM instance profile and the IAM role that has been attached to this EC2 instance, I can now do an authentication to AWS. And having authenticated, I will get an access token. So if I do a lookup of the token itself, I can see that it has been attached with the app A team policy. So this allows uh, this EC2 to have the, uh, the permissions that has been defined within the app A policy itself. <clears throat> so now if I try to fetch an app A secret, I should be able to do so. And here I'm. Uh, I can see the data that has been written as an app A secret, but using the same policy now, if I try to retrieve app B secret, I will get a permission denied. <clears throat> so this is um, so this is how we can automate uh the authentication workflow of our AWS resources, uh, allowing it to fetch what is needed uh from Vault itself. <clears throat> so this is more or less it for today's uh, snapshot. So if there's any questions, please feel free to put in the Q&A uh, Q &A, uh, chat you know, within Zoom itself. <clears throat>